Hey everyone, I've got a pocket sized top 5 list for you today. That means that these are games that fit in your back pocket, which is really, really easy and transportable. Anywhere you want to go, grab these games and you'll have a great time with them. I've organized my list starting with the only two player game all the way up to a possibility of a 10 player game. And at the very end, I'm going to share with you a meta game that actually makes your night just a little bit more fun, particularly if you've played with the same gamers every night and you want to spice things up a little bit. My first game is for two players only. It is Avignon, A Clash of Popes. This is a really strong push and pull. So in the beginning of the game, players are going to set up five cities in a row, and one player is going to play Avignon, the other player is going to play on the Rome side, and in the center, there's going to be Genoa, and you have cards, character cards, that you lay out in that particular row face up. And the whole point of the game is to pull those characters over past your city, if it's Rome or if it's Avignon. And the first player to collect three character cards wins the game. The thing that makes this game work really well is how balanced it is. On every player's turn, they're going to do exactly two actions, and they're not allowed to do the same action twice. You can beseech a character, which is pull them toward you. You can chastise a character, which means push them away from you. You can excommunicate a character by discarding that character, drawing a new one from the face down draw pile, and placing them in the exact spot that that previous character came from. Or you can petition a character, which uses the special text on the card itself. It's so streamlined and simple and straightforward but the game works. It's, it's clever. And when you see your opponent doing certain things, you respond to it immediately. And there's a rule in the, the book that says you're not allowed to completely reverse exactly your opponent's previous turn. And so there's no full undoing. There can be partial undoing, uh, but not a full undoing. And the very first player only gets one of their two actions as a an advantage of going first. I think Avignon, A Clash of Popes, is a game that everybody should keep in their back pocket, ready for whenever they and their partner are a little bored and you want to play a 15 to 20 minute game or you're stuck somewhere. It's a really cool game to have in your back pocket. My next game plays three players and if you have the bonus, it gives you an expansion to four to six players. It is Wildcats. Now, this game is a little goofy, I have to admit, but what it does is it reminds me of a three-player game called I'm the Banana, and I'm the Banana is a game that I played endlessly and relentlessly with the Asmodee demo team group every time we would go out for dinner, <laughs> and we would all just sit around waiting for our food, and we would play I'm, I'm the Banana. The game is pretty straightforward. You're going to take the three cats in the game, good cat, bad cat, and wild cat. You're going to shuffle those cards face down and pass one to each of the players at the table. Everyone's going to look at their cards secretly and figure out if they have to lie or tell the truth, or they get to choose if they're the wild cat. And then they also look at the bottom of the card to find out what their win condition is. After everybody has tried to talk everyone else into uh, whatever they want, which is just a big fun people just talking over each other at the same time and it's crazy and nonsense. should last about a minute or two. Then everyone is going to vote on the count of three the cat that they want to eliminate. Now they're not sure exactly who that cat is, but they think they know who that cat is because they want to eliminate that cat to win. And then after you find out who got eliminated, then, or not, then you flip over your cards and see who won that particular game. The expansion adds Fat Cat, Cool Cat, and Smarty Cat, and they have different rules. And again, you can play with more than just three players. This game is super, super portable, and it's way fast. It's a game that you play when you're waiting for your food at a restaurant or when you're stuck in transportation. So break out Wildcats when you just want to have a five-minute goof fest. 
My next game plays one to four, and it's a team game. Sprawlopolis. This game is really cool. I love that it has a solo mode, but it also plays two to four players, and you are working on a team to build this city based on the expectations of the objectives. So there are three scorecards that are flipped over, and those are your goals for the game, and that's it. Every game, those goals are going to change, which definitely gives it that versatility of play. You can play it a lot and it doesn't feel repetitive. It also is a fast game, so you kind of want to play another game right after you play your first game. So once you've got these objectives laid out, each player is going to get these cards that have blocks and regions in them and they're going to play a card on their turn into the central build area and then pass their cards to the next player. And so you're going to be sharing these cards, you're going to be playing them, you're also going to be hopefully working together and talking together so that you can build this city in the most effective way possible so that you can earn the most victory points based on what your goal is or your objective is. So the card thinks you're gonna get a certain amount of victory points and then if you exceed that, then you're doing really well and you essentially won the game after you finish playing all 15 cards into the build area. It's a really beautiful game too. When you look at the cards, I think the artwork is just pretty. And so you're having a great time playing the game. It is super compact, very, very transportable. And again, I love the idea of a one to four player game that is cooperative. My next game is for two to four players, and it is kind of the coolest thing that happened when it happened. It is Love Letter. This does fit in your back pocket. It just sticks in there because it's a velvet pouch. Love Letter kind of blew my mind when it came out, mostly because look, it's this, it's so small. And honestly, if you just keep track of your cubes on a piece of paper, you don't have to have the cubes, you could just carry around the cards. This deck is so slim, and it's all about probability and kind of outthinking your fellow player. Everybody is going to have a card that they have in front of them, face down, and on your turn, you are going to draw from the deck another card. Look at your two cards, and then play one of them face up. That's your turn. Now when you play your card face up, the card face up on the table is your action. That's the card that you played to do whatever it says. Now some card combinations are bad and they tell you to do certain things if you have another card in your hand. And ultimately what you're trying to do is just be the last player standing. You want to eliminate everybody else at the table. And it is a game of trying to outthink your opponent. It's a game of you know, protecting yourself when you need to, or trying to guess the identity of someone else at the table. Now, if you're not the last player standing and you have other opponents that made it to the end after the draw deck is gone, you then have to reveal your cards and whoever has the highest card, the highest numbered card, wins that round. It is so fun and so addictive and so clean. Um, it, it's just a great game. And honestly, I've played so many games of Love Letter and then so many games of Love Letter Batman. Now, Love Letter Batman doesn't have a cool velvet pouch, but if I could transport Batman around, I would probably just stuff Love Letter Batman inside my Love Letter pouch. I'll probably do that. Uh, because I like the, the Batman one. This game is so fun and again, I've played it mostly with the four player game and it's just uh, wholly addictive and fun. It's just fun and you should always carry this around in your pocket because you never know when you can sneak in a game of love letter and it's so easy to teach. You should teach everyone to play this game. It's great. Okay, so my next game and my number five game of this list can go all the way up to 10 players. Now, the reason I say 10 players is because I got a really cool version of this game because it's super transportable and easily shared and tactile. It is my meeple version of Werewolf. Yeah. There's a seer, there are two werewolves, and then there are seven villagers. And if you know how to play werewolf, 
you don't need the rules and all you need are these meeples so what you do is you put them in a sack or a hat or a bowl or just in your hands and then people will take the meeple secretly look at who they are and then they know what their role is for the game now in werewolf people are teamed up there's the werewolf team which in this case there are two for a full 10 player game and then everybody else is on the villager team and the villagers are trying to find the werewolves and then kill them in the daytime and the werewolves are trying to hunt down and track the villagers and the seer in the nighttime and then kill and eat them and the ratio just continues to shift until one of the teams eliminates the other team. Now in this version you do need a moderator because you have, you know, this is just like having cards. So if you had cards for Werewolf you could easily put those in your back pocket. I just have a super cool set that I've carried around with me and, fun fact, never played Werewolf with these meeples before. <laughs> are unused. <laughs> Nobody will play werewolf with me. Um, so this is so transportable and I love the fun aspect of these cool painted um, meeples that kind of bring a little bit of flair to your werewolf but really just kind of let you play werewolf on the fly. Okay time for my game night social meta game as promised. This game Yep, you can fit it in your back pocket and take it to any game night. It is pretense. Ah, oh, pretense is so easy to do. What you do is you grab all the cards inside the game, you shuffle them up, and then at the beginning of game night, you pass it out to everybody who's at the game night. Everyone's gonna look at their card and just keep it face down in front of them, and that's going to give them some trigger that allows them to take someone's card or during the middle of the night, you can guess somebody else's card. And the whole point of this meta game is to collect as many characters as you can. When you take someone's card, you become that role, and then you try to achieve that particular goal. And these cards are ridiculous. There's the frat boy. If another player gives you a high five, you may take their role card, clown. If you make the entire group laugh out loud, you may take another player's roll card. Crafter, ooh, if you convince the group to play a game with the house rule, you may take any other player's roll card. And Glutton, if any player hands you food or drink, you may take their roll card. And so you can play with these cards or you can play with the blank cards and fill in things that you know your gamers do when they come over for game night. It's silly, it's fun, it's easily transportable, and it just adds another level of gaming to your game night for that super fun social meta game. <laughs>